This BTEC Sport and Exercise Science video is for Unit 2 Functional Anatomy. We are looking at the skeletal system and this is, should be the last video um, relating to this system. It's for D6 and it looks at the six functions of the skeletal system. Now the great thing about this is that we've actually covered them all through the other topics. So this really isn't new knowledge. It's just drawing it together and, and making sense of it, relating it to the job of the skeletal system as a whole. This is important because it's not only useful in some of the big questions, but it's been an eight marker, which is the biggest, um, I guess, biggest short answer question that you can do. Um, and here was the eight marker that we were asked about. Skeletal system has a number of functions that support participation in sports and exercise activities. These functions include providing a supporting framework, producing movement and blood cell production. Now, it's given you three of the six functions. What it's asking you to do in this question is to analyze the three other functions of the skeletal system to support participation and exercise activities. So it's given you three and you, it, it gives you no wiggle room. You've got to know the other three. But let's have a look at all six and hopefully you will feel comfortable being able to approach even a question like that. So the first function is a supporting framework. Without our skeletal system, we would be a blobby mess of tissue and organs. Um, so we, our skeleton provides this rigid framework, this structure that gives us stability, that gives us shape, that our internal organs kind of are suspended within. Remember, we've got this axial skeleton, this central axis, and we've got these appendages or appendicular skeleton, our limbs that attach to the axial skeleton. So essentially, this is the supporting framework with which all our other tissues either attach to or are contained within. The next function is protection from injury. So for example, our vertebral column, protects our spinal cord, which is obviously critical for us. Um, our cranium protects our brain. Our thorax or chest cavity protects our heart and lungs. There are loads of examples. Typically, the bones that are protective are irregular bones like the vertebral column or flat bones like the cranial bones. So number two function is protection from injury. If you're playing rugby or football, you need all of these delicate internal organs to be protected. And these two types of bones are the main ones that protect us. Third function, muscle attachment. Be careful with this one. This is different to movement. This is muscle attachment. So what we mean by this is our muscles extend to tendons, which then attach to our bones. So our skeleton is what the tendons attach to. And of course, muscles contract, pull on the tendons, pull on the bones, and movement can often happen. So a, a nice example of this is um, long bones, so the humerus. If our biceps brachii contracts, it pulls on this tendon, which is attached to the um, radius, and then our forearm will be pulled up and it's flexion at the elbow joint. So because this long bone here has the tendon attached to it, it creates movement. This is another example, the scapula, this big, broad, flat bone. And you can see all the red tissue here is muscles. So lots and lots of different muscles attached to this flat bone because it's a big surface area for that to happen. So I suggest that you kind of pause the video with these slides, take a, a closer look, a closer read at these, and just make sure you understand it. Some of this is just examples. Remember, we've got bony landmarks. The, the bumps on our bones are often what um, tendons and muscles attach to. So we've got this process here that is where that tendon attaches. We've got a um, tuberosity, a, a bump, a large bump on the side of our humerus, which our deltoid muscle attaches to. So bones are what muscles attach to. And logically following on from that, movement, our skeleton enables us to create movement because muscles attach to bones and because we have joints or articulations between two or more bones, um, 
these bones actually function as a lever system. We've, the bones, the hard rigid structures are the levers, the muscles are the effort, the load is either the weight of the limb or whatever we're holding, could be a dumbbell, and we've got a fulcrum, this, this um, joint with which movement can happen around. So movement happens because we've got a lever system. The levers are the bones, the muscles are the effort. So those number three and number four are kind of similar, but a little bit different as well. And they need you need to find a way of separating them. Number five, we learned earlier about long bones and how important they are for red blood cell, white blood cell and platelet production. Red blood cells are obviously essential for us and they are produced in the red bone marrow, which is in this cancellous bone at the ends of our long bones. Red blood cells have a relatively short lifespan. Now, this has been a standalone question, actually. Red blood cells don't live that long, 120 days, then they die. But we need red blood cells because they contain haemoglobin and haemoglobin is what carries oxygen for us in our blood and delivers it to lots of our cells, including our muscles. So red blood cells are essential for transporting oxygen and living and existing, let alone playing sports. So we need them. Given that they die after a couple of months, we must continually rebuild and reproduce them. And that's why red bone marrow in our skeleton, in our long bones, is it's a key function of what they offer us. Just as a bit of extra knowledge, the hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells is called EPO, erythropoietin. The posh name for red blood cells is erythrocytes, and that's why it's got that name. But if you can remember EPO as a starting point, that's great. So EPO is the hormone that produces or stimulates the production of red blood cells in the cancellous bone in the red bone marrow. And we need it because they don't live long. They die after 120 days. So we need this constant resupplying of red blood cells. Just as well, though, it's not just red blood cells that are made there, it's white and platelets as well. The final function is our skeleton acts as a store of minerals. Now, I haven't mentioned it before and I should have done. I've put a little acronym up here because it looks like it's almost like a mirror, S-P-M-M-P-S. So, you know, shape and structure and support, um, protection, muscle attachment, movement, what was the previous one? Production of red blood cells. And of course, this one is store of minerals. So that might be a little way for you to remember these six functions. So hopefully, you know, from previous videos on bone growth and bone remodeling that minerals are really important for bone health, for bone density. Um, calcium is essential and phosphorus is really important, too. Um, so we need high levels of these minerals in our bones anyway for bone health. But the body has lots of other uses for these minerals. So, for example, for muscle contraction or nerve impulses, we need some of these minerals. Calcium is, is, is certainly important for muscle contraction. What that means is not only do bones need to have calcium for bone strength and bone density, but they store calcium and phosphorus for other body purposes and when the body so i've tried to show it down here with this diagram when the body needs calcium for other jobs the bones release some calcium into the bloodstream the bloodstream takes it where it's needed and there it is it's used elsewhere when we eat or consume um, in our diet more calcium it gets transported it gets absorbed from the obviously digestion and transported into the blood and then taken to the bones to be stored so hopefully you can understand that whilst bones in their own right need lots of minerals calcium phosphorus in particular they also store minerals for other jobs in the body Now, those were the six functions of the skeleton that you must know for your specification. But I've added this one just because it's kind of related. Um, hopefully, again, you remember that we've got this medullary cavity in uh, long bones, this central uh, length of the bone here. Inside it is bone marrow. And that's basically a fat store. In there, we've got a store of triglycerides, the form of fat where, that we store. And that's helpful for us at times for things like making energy.
So whilst this probably isn't listed on your spec and may not come in a specific question, we do also store important triglyceride fats in the yellow bone marrow of long bones. So there's a summary. These are all the six functions of the skeleton. There's our acronym that might help you. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Lastly, then, let's have a look at some exam questions to see what sort of context these might come to you in. Here's a full marker. So it tells you, again, skeletal system has some functions, blood cell production, support, storage of minerals and protections. It's given you four and it says explain using examples to the other two functions. Again, I find this a bit mean because it, it means you've got to know all six. It's told you for you've got to know the other two and it wants you to explain through examples. So given it's four marks, you want two marks for each of your explained examples. So here is the mark scheme and hopefully you would have known from uh, what you've just learned that the two other functions are providing attachment for tendons or muscles and to make movement happen. Those two, if you remember, were similar but have to be kept separate. So we've got these bony landmarks on our, our bones like processes, like tuberosities um, that often connective tissue like tendons or ligaments attaches to. Movement happens when the muscles contract, pull and shorten and pull on the bone. That should, if I think, that should refer to the lever system as well. Bones act as levers to enable movement to happen. Here's another example. Explain the importance of the skeleton in red blood cell production for three marks. So again, I talked through that on the slide. Hopefully you'll recognize the information. They don't live long. We've got to continually replace, replace them. The skeleton does that for us in the red bone marrow um, where we produce red blood cells. Um, and why is it so important? It asks why is it important? Because red blood cells are essential for transporting oxygen as oxyhemoglobin around our body in the blood. I think there's maybe two more questions to go. So here's another one. It's given you two of the functions. It wants any other two. So this is slightly kinder. It gives you a bit more flexibility. So you have four that you could choose from. Examples being storage of minerals, protection from injury. But it wants an example. It says in the question, explain using examples. If you don't give an example, you only get a fraction of the marks. So mineral store, for example, storing calcium. Protection from injury, for example, cranium protects the brain. Hopefully nice and easy. This was that eight marker that I talked to you about right at the start. So it gave you three of the functions and it wanted these other three. And this is how they structure these eight markers. They, these are the basic facts you must include, but they want you to develop that information and give more and more detail about it. And then, of course, relate it to sports science. The question itself says, analyze three functions of the skeletal system to support participation in sport and exercise activities. So you've got to respond to that bit of the question and explain these functions in the context of sport and exercise. So protection from a tackle or headering, for example. So there we are, the six functions of the skeletal system, much of which we knew through the learning of this whole section. And there's the acronym to help you out.